The presidency says Nigeria not interested in naming and shaming alleged sponsors of terrorism. And Andy Ba, a Nigerian politician indicted in the US and the United Kingdom, just might have a chance to become governor of Anambra State. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anakon. Presidential spokesperson Femi Adishino has stated that the federal government is not interested in naming and shaming sponsors of terrorism. He said the government is more interested in ensuring that those found guilty will be brought to book. He stated this while responding to questions asked by journalists. Uh, he said there are, that they are interested in bringing those found guilty to justice. Specifically, the presidential aide was asked if the president will address the recent move by the United Arab Emirates to place six Nigerians on the terror list. The Nigerians are six of 38 individuals whom the UAE suspects to be financiers of terrorism. Now, on the issue of borrowings, Adishina uh, assured that the Buhari administration borrows for the sake of developing the nation and not to steal like other governments. Well, joining us to discuss this is Achike Chude. He's a political affairs analyst and Kalawali Johnson, a political affairs commentator. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Yeah, thank you. Great. Uh, Mr. Johnson, let me start with you because you are a, a special a specialist when it comes to communications and, and uh, the likes. Um, what Mr. Adeshino has said obviously means that the federal government, in his words, will deal with the perpetrators, uh, but they're not interested in naming and shaming. But the, the question that has been on the minds of average Nigerians since that list of, um, by the UAE surfaced and the fact that these people have already been made to face justice in the UAE. But then there's also a report by the United Nations addressing the fact that we also have people in this government who seemingly might be um, linked to, you know, terrorism. But Nigerians are wondering why the government seems to be tight-lipped about it and why they cannot be naming and shaming. So explain to us why government wants to do one and not the other. I was going to lay a solid background for the conclusion. Well, let me just do uh, a recap. The government came in with the confidence, the confidence of the people that they were going to end violent killing across the country and the activities of Boko Haram. Now, not too long that the government came in, Boko Haram was, of course, they had launched it. Then, they made time of force. We started seeing communities being attacked, farmers being attacked in their study farms. And the first thing the government did was to take a tactical side by coming through strategic communication, and they called that process farmers and elders clashes. Now, these are innocent people in their study farms and communities that some people would attack. Now, if you understand communication, you will understand clearly that that is attempting to minimize or to trivialize the killings and the issue. Then secondly, when it got beyond the elbow and it appeared they were terrorizing the nation and we expected the government to take a huge stand against them, again, don't forget, it was not the media that described them as bandits. It was the government that gave us the name and said we should, that it is an act of banditry. Then suddenly, the same people who were, were attacked across the world as a fourth, the fourth most dangerous you know, terrorist group in the world, we started calling them bandits. Then suddenly or gradually, we became the second most terrorized nation in the world. And the only factors are traceable to these guys. Yet, 
We refuse to call them terrorists, not the people, now the government. So if today the government says that they are not ready to name and shame those who are involved, now you can just trace the antecedents of the government stand on this issue from time and take a conclusion. Now what is that conclusion? When you take a group agitating for self-determination, and you call them terrorists. Well, nobody even raised the alarm. Of course, nobody wanted violence or want violence in the country. Now, when you now take those who are causing the real violence, killing people, kidnapping for ransom, and you see governors coming out to tell us that they are only doing business, that they are better off. Now, again, you see people who rise against them being decimated day by day. I'll give you two quick examples. Sometimes they go in Buenos State. The government cried out that they heard that they were going to attack a certain community. And he wrote to the president. He complained. He gave them the intel. Now, nothing was done. But as soon as the attack was made and the people were slaughtered. Now, when the people wanted to mobilize to attack back, you remember what happened? Now, they moved into that community and they disarmed them. Not just that. The government did not want the state governor or the state government to make anything out of those killings. Now, go to or your state. When some people rose against those who, who, who were daily killing them, raping their women. Now, the government also moved there and disarmed everyone involved. Today, those guys are in prison cells. But the main people that they are moving, who have been killing us, whom governor told us that they can move around with arms across the country, have been protected. So what does that tell you? That's a tactical support. And I'll give you one close example. So you're example alleging that there's tell a you also, effort or a combined synergized effort by governments at all levels, states and local, uh, to protect terrorists? Because this is what your analysis seems to be pointing to. No, I'm attempting to, let me give you the basic, you, you are afraid to make a conclusion. Now, take for example, when a state governor rose against them, even via law and pronouncement, the government immediately moved and defended these people tactically. Now, have you noticed that uh, not too long ago, a few weeks ago, when an emir made a pronouncement and, and, and said, that they were going to drive these killers out of their community. Now suddenly you see the Miyati Allah handing over some of them that they said were the one perpetrating, you know, the act. Now what does that tell you? Now they've been harboring them all along and they never gave them up until an Anya made that pronouncement. And after that pronouncement, there was no support from the government. Quickly, these people, they behave themselves. Now each time you see that there is an alarm against them, and the government gives tactical support. Now, they get emboldened the more. They get daring the more. Now, I'm just giving you the history of this government, of, of this government posture towards these same people. So, it is just an extension of their posture to say they will not name and shame them. In any case, when the U.S. offered to do that, Nigeria never accepted the offer. We were expecting the government to accept the offer and said, please name them. Let's shame them together. Now, if we say uh, that we do not want to name and shame them, and we are not seeing any trial in the court of law, now, should that not tell you uh, that perhaps the government is not even serious about naming anyone involved in this? Okay. Let me go to Achike. Achike, do you, do you support what he's saying? Because I'm trying to understand why a government who took an oath to protect and serve us, uh, to protect our lives and our properties, would want to support terrorists whom they have termed to be outsiders coming into Nigeria to perpetrate these acts of violence. Why would they be protecting these terrorists and not naming and shaming them, knowing how many people have fallen to the hands of these terrorists? It depends on the nature and character of the government. And sometimes you have all kinds of people who make up government, people with sundry interests. 
interests that are sometimes inimical to the interests of the state and to the interests of the people. So uh, it, is, it is not uncommon uh, for you to have people in, in government who might not exactly be patriotic and who may not be imbued with the vision you know, for uh, 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 the, the nation state. So, uh, but, but beyond that, you look at concrete instances, examples, that gives people the impression this government does not have the political will or is not actually interested in putting an end. It's, just, it's fortunate to come up I mean, with that kind of um, position. But there are so many things to look at. For instance, when the uh, United Arab Emirates, the very first time the story broke, that some Nigerians had been prosecuted and convicted, the response from the federal government, you will think that it was supposed to be that of elation and happiness and joy, that another country had done a job that we could not do. But what was the response of the government? So government officials came to tell to say that, well, those who have been convicted have a right to appeal to a higher court, uh, you, you know, to turn, overturn their conviction if the court so finds that they are not guilty. Now, that was a very strange position for the government. Hey, uh, it's, they believe, uh, again, when the government is that they are not interested in, 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 uh, uh, in naming and shaming, you want to ask why. Because the international practice is that nations, nation states work, uh, uh, you know, uh, among, I mean, work together uh, when it comes to intelligence sharing. Uh, that's origin. And so we have, we've had this, uh, even the very top echelon of terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and so on. We knew who the leadership was. We knew who the number one person was. We knew who the number you know, uh, uh, two person was and the number three person was in those terrorist organizations. So states tend to share you know, intelligence and information with one another. But what do we have in Nigeria? You have the Minister of Information say that the Nigerian government is in prosecuting uh, 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 terrorists in this international best practice. So when Penny Additional now comes and says that there is no people and shaming all their interests in, so in prosecuting at uh, these terrorists, but the Minister of Information had already told us that the government does not have any interest in prosecuting them. You know, so the government's position is just forgive them. That is all. I'm sorry. The minister, at, what what point, at what point did the at what point did the information minister say that the government had no interest in prosecuting terrorists? Sorry. sorry? At, what, at what point did the information minister say this? Well, oh, this about this uh, this about two weeks now. It's been on. It's been, it, it was carried in the national newspaper. Are you Trump talking? Page. Of, are you talking about the repentant ones? Because of course the federal government has agreed with the army to. Um, reintegrate them into society. Of course, that also has a question mark, but I so don't know they're, about... They're all connected now. I mean, if, if you say, if these people have committed atrocities and the government says we are not interested in prosecuting them, uh, you know, and that according to the Minister of Information, it is international best practice, and then the next thing you are hearing stories about reintegrating them into the society and so on, uh, you know, you ask yourself what is going on. Of course, the minister did not, it was an untruth from the minister. It wasn't true when he said it was international best practice. It cannot be international best practice because if we, we look at, I mean, all, you know, uh, you know along the, uh, I mean, his, history's trajectory, the Nuremberg trial, for instance, the, the, the trial of uh, the, you know, uh, those who committed genocide in Rwanda, the Arusha, you know, uh, 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 International uh, Criminal Court, I mean, tribunal, the, and so many others. The one involving uh, uh, Kone and then uh, the Lost Resistance Army of Uganda, and then, you know, uh, the, the uh, Congolese camp counterparts who committed atrocities, the same kind of atrocities that Boko Haram had, you know, committed, the, the, the looted villages, post villages, rich people, kill, you know, uh, 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 people in mass, and then they were brought before the International Criminal Court, and charges levied against them, the governments willingly gave up these people to the International Criminal Court for prosecution. But what you have in Nigeria, and then the minister says it's international best practice, it is not true. There, there, there is no place where the international community called criminals, uh, terrorists, and killers, uh, uh, you know, and then after they are going to forgive them. 
So when Adeshino is not exactly saying the truth, when he says they are going to prosecute them, Nigerians believe immediately the, the, the United Arab Emirates released the names of Nigerians and the people sponsoring terrorists in Nigeria. What was that true of Nigerians everywhere? Nigeria said, Nigeria said on social media and so many other you know, fora that they doubted the ability of the federal government to name these people. So what does that mean? That there is this suspicion, and people have always talked about it, that the government is treating killers with kids' gloves. Because there are things we do not know. Look at the Patani issue. They came out and spoke in favor of Patani. Perhaps the man has changed. But the reality, because the stakes are so high, you don't want to you know, leave that kind of person in government. And because the issue of change is something that is you know, psychological, something that is also spiritual. You cannot determine whether a person has repented or a person okay. has changed. You, nobody has the end. So in order to, to be safe, you, you make sure that the person is removed from the system. Okay. But what did the government do? The government did not, uh, uh, was not interested in doing that. Let me come back to you, Mr. Johnson. Um, we keep talking about the government. Yes, it, it, the, the, the box stops at the table of Mr. President. Uh, but then we have other arms of government. We have the judiciary. We have the legislature. We even have states and local governments who also seem to be the ones mostly at the receiving end. And I'm talking about uh, parts of the country where, you know, their people are at the receiving end. We're talking about Benue states. Um, we're talking about um, all of the states in the, north, uh, in the northwest. We're talking about even the middle belt. Uh, if the federal government seems to be unwilling, what are the state governments doing to push or force the arm of government? And where does this even leave the average Nigerian who seems to have lost family or, the, or, or our gallant soldiers, whether they be the Air Force or the, the Army or, or, or the Navy or even the Joint Tax Force and, and the people who are policing in these areas? What message is the government passing to these people? Say this. If, if the, the security, if the police, for instance, had been decentralized, uh, you, you know, and uh, we are now in, con in control, under the control of governors, and there's breakdown, you, you know, of uh, law and order in the society, and you have, you know, criminal elements laying siege on the state, do you think that anybody is going to call the president? They are not going to call the president. The only, the only calling the president, the governor will be held responsible by the citizens because he has a primary responsibility, you know, uh, and control over the, 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 the deployment of security of the police, of police people in his domain. But it is because he does not have that power, he does not have that ability. So they can, or they will always find, you know, a, a ready excuse in blaming the president for his inability to ensure security of the citizens. And then we talked about this, about, about judiciary. They all have roles to play. But the judiciary is not, is not uh, um, the prosecuting uh, agency of, of government. They are not the ones, they, they have, cases have to be brought before them by the government, after the government has done its job. Then that is, at, it's at that level that the judiciary will do its own, will carry out its own responsibilities. If you don't bring this people before the judiciary, they are not going to get involved in it. You know, and okay. then and then local government, and of course the issue of, of uh, insecurity is a total mark, the total of the federal government, hundred percent. But that is not to say that states do not have a response. Or Tom asking for the government to make it possible for for the citizens to be armed. You, you know, because you can't go against you can't go up against terrorists with their bows and arrows. It is suicide. So, but the government has been very, very reluctant. But what is strange about it is that in certain parts of the North, they are allowing the, yeah, you know, to carry arms, while in other parts of the country you do not allow it. So it is, it is this um, uh, 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 double standards that a lot of people are worried about, and that's why people believe there's something that is going on in the government that um, they are not telling us. Uh, and that the government is not exactly innocent of, about what is going on. It's unfortunate that we have that, that, that feeling. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Johnson, oh. uh, apparently this question was for you, but Achike uh, uh, had to answer it. So uh, there's still a third part of the question. Where does this leave the victims, soldiers who have died, people who have lost friends and family, people who their family members have been killed in custody, um, those who have even had to sell their property to get their... Um, family members who were abducted, 
uh, out of the hands of these kidnappers. I, I mean, the list is endless. There are people who have been one way or the other um, driven away from where they, they used to call home. And the government on the one hand is saying we need to, that these people are brothers and sisters, to borrow the words of the presidency, and we should learn to accommodate them. Um, and then the government is also saying we want, they need to reintegrate them. And we're asking so many questions that we have not been able to get answers to. Yet, there are also governor, governors and leaders who have said, Buy, take up arms, protect yourself, we need to um, resort to self-help. There seems to be so many dissenting voices and not one voice that is speaking to the calm that we're looking for. All right. Um, let me attempt to contribute to the last question as I move on to the uh, one you just asked. You said there are all the bodies, like state governors, local government council, and Others, the, although the box top by the paper of the president, perhaps others could do something or can do something. Now, security has been placed on that exclusive list that falls under the purview of, of the federal government. And we have a very peculiar structure or what they will call uh, security infrastructure. Oh, sorry. Architecture. The federal government controls the armed forces. The federal government controls the police. The federal government controls even the civil defense. And the state controls practically nothing. As a matter of fact, we have advocated all more time for state police. But of course, FG has been stating its position against that. So if those who are coming against us come with guns, come with dangerous arms, and those who can match them with arms are controlled by the federal government. Now logically, it, I mean, it just follows. That if nothing is, or if not much is being done, you don't blame people who are armless, who, who are not having arms. We take the blame to those who control those who have the arms. Even when we were not getting off enough and we complained to the president, he said the ID was, I mean, it was not far, the former ID, so it means he was doing enough. We cried against the army chiefs for how long? They were never changed. Each time some killings happen, they enter the villa, you know, they have some meetings and they come out and they said, oh, and, you know, we use your statement. Now, see, even when children were being kidnapped from schools, what exactly did the government do? Uh, let's quickly put a, uh, a wrap on this conversation, Mr. Johnson. So, um, there, Mr. Femi uh, Additional has said that there are security, different security agencies working on dealing with this issue and that the people that we are asking to be named and shamed will finally appear in court. They'll have their day in court. And, of course, they will have serious cases, uh, you know, for them to face and justice will be served. So in closing, do we see this happening anytime soon? Or, as you have said, we should not um, hold our breath? Well, I, I, I am a diehard optimist in this country. So we'll continue to hope for the better, which means that we'll hope that the government will prosecute these guys who are involved. Besides, now this government is six years in power. Now, are we saying we have not caught anyone? I thought at a time like that, we were raising some eyebrows that, oh, you know, we know those who are sponsoring. Each time, you know, in those days, the government come out to say, oh, they are politically motivated. Does that mean that they didn't have their intel to know who, pol I mean, who motivated those things politically? Or were they just saying this to ensure that they divert attention from themselves? Now, please note that I'm not saying that the government is directly sponsoring terrorism. 
But what we are saying is simple, that the response of the government shows that there are questions to be asked. And so if we will not name and shame them, and we are not seeing anyone in court up till today, yet the government says that they will have their day in court. Is it those we don't even know exist that will have their day in court? Or those that external nations, help, I mean foreign nations, help us to name and we are not taking responsibility that by to take it up from there. I mean, the people, so the people in the UAE have expect, already been prosecuted, so they do not need to be prosecuted again. Okay, if those ones have been prosecuted, is it that they didn't name anybody back home here? So those we have also identified, so why are we not bringing them out? It's a big question that needs to be answered. Unfortunately, we have to wrap things up. Kalawale Johnson, Achike Trude, thank you very much for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, we will take a short break, and when we come back, new reports reaching us indicate that Andy Uba, the candidate of the All Progressive Congress APC for the November 6 governorship elections in Anambra State, was indicted some years back for smuggling dollars to the US and pounds to the UK. He was a subject of the UK investigation into an advanced free fraud scheme known as 419 in Nigeria. When we come back, we'll talk more.